History of Music, Wikipedia Audio Music is found in every known culture, past and present, varying widely between times and places. Since all people of the world, including the most isolated tribal groups, have a form of music, it may be concluded that music is likely to have been present in the ancestral population prior to the dispersal of humans around the world. Consequently, music may have been in existence for at least 55,000 years and the first music may have been invented in Africa and then evolved to become a fundamental constituent of human life. A culture's music is influenced by all other aspects of that culture including social and economic organization and experience, climate, and access to technology. The emotions and ideas that music expresses, the situations in which music is played and listened to, and the attitudes toward music players and composers all vary between regions and periods. Music history is the distinct subfield of musicology and history which studies music from a chronological perspective. Prehistoric music, once more commonly called primitive music, is the name given to all music produced in preliterate cultures, beginning somewhere in very late geological history. Prehistoric music is followed by ancient music in most of Europe and later music in subsequent European-influenced areas, but still exists in isolated areas. Eras of Music Prehistoric music thus technically includes all of the world's music that has existed before the advent of any currently extant historical sources concerning that music, for example, traditional Native American music of preliterate tribes and Australian Aboriginal music. However, it is more common to refer to the prehistoric music of non-European continents especially that which still survives as folk, indigenous or traditional music. The origin of music is unknown as it occurred prior to recorded history. Some suggest that the origin of music likely stems from naturally occurring sounds and rhythms. Human music may echo these phenomena using patterns, repetition, and tonality. Even today, some cultures have certain instances of their music intending to imitate natural sounds. In some instances, this feature is related to shamanistic beliefs or practice. It may also serve entertainment or practical functions. It is probable that the first musical instrument was the human voice itself, which can make a vast array of sounds, from singing, humming and whistling through to clicking, coughing, and yawning. As for other musical instruments, in 2008 archaeologists discovered a bone flute in the Heilfels cave near Ulm, Germany. Considered to be about 35,000 years old, the five-hold flute has a V-shaped mouthpiece and is made from a vulture wing bone. The oldest known wooden pipes were discovered near Greystones, Ireland, in 2004. A wood-lined pit contained a group of six flutes made from mew wood, between 30 and 50 centimeters long, tapered at one end, but without any finger holes. They may once have been strapped together. It has been suggested that the Divj Babe flute, a cave bear femur dated to be approximately 43,500 years old, is the world's oldest musical instrument and was produced by Neanderthal. Claims that the femur is indeed a musical instrument are, however, contested by alternative theories including the suggestion that the femur may have been gnawed by carnivores to produce holes. The prehistoric age is considered to have ended with the development of writing, and with it, by definition, prehistoric music. Ancient music is the name given to the music that followed. The oldest known song was written in cuneiform dating to 3,400 years ago from Ugarit. It was deciphered by Andraf Korn Kilmer, 
and was demonstrated to be composed in harmonies of thirds, like ancient Gimel, and also was written using a Pythagorean tuning of the diatonic scale. The oldest surviving example of a complete musical composition, including musical notation, from anywhere in the world, is the Sikilos epitaph. Double pipes, such as those used by the ancient Greeks, and ancient bagpipes, as well as a review of ancient drawings on vases and walls, etc., and ancient writings which described musical techniques of the time, indicate polyphony. One pipe in the alas pairs likely served as a drone or keynote, while the other played melodic passages. Instruments, such as the seven-hold flute and various types of stringed instruments have been recovered from the Indus Valley Civilization archaeological sites. Indian classical music can be found from the scriptures of the Hindu tradition, the Vedas. Samaveda one of the four Vedas, describes music at length. Ravana Hathi is a bowed fiddle popular in western India. It is believed to have originated among the Hela civilization of Sri Lanka in the time of King Ravana. This string instrument has been recognized as one of the oldest string instruments in world history. The history of musical development in Iran dates back to the prehistoric era. The great legendary king, Jamshid, is credited with the invention of music. Music in Iran can be traced back to the days of the Elamite Empire. Fragmentary documents from various periods of the country's history establish that the ancient Persians possessed an elaborate musical culture. The Sassanid period, in particular, has left us ample evidence pointing to the existence of a lively musical life in Persia. The names of some important musicians such as Barbad, Nakissa, and Ramton, and titles of some of their works have survived. The early music era may also include contemporary but traditional or folk music, including Asian music, Persian music, music of India, Jewish music, Greek music, Roman music, the music of Mesopotamia, the music of Egypt, and Muslim music. Prehistoric music Greece Greek written history extends far back into ancient Greece, and was a major part of ancient Greek theatre. In ancient Greece, mixed-gender choruses performed for entertainment, celebration, and spiritual reasons. Instruments included the double reed alas and the pluck string instrument, the lyre, especially the special kind called a kithara. Music was an important part of education in ancient Greece, and boys were taught music starting at age six. According to Istan's Bible Dictionary, Jubal was named by the Bible as the inventor of musical instruments. The Hebrews were much given to the cultivation of music. Their whole history and literature afford abundant evidence of this. After the deluge, the first mention of music is in the account of Laban's interview with Jacob. After their triumphal passage of the Red Sea, Moses and the children of Israel sang their song of deliverance. But the period of Samuel, David, and Solomon was the golden age of Hebrew music, as it was of Hebrew poetry. Music was now for the first time systematically cultivated. It was an essential part of training in the schools of the prophets. There now arose also a class of professional singers. Solomon's temple, however, was the great school of music. In the conducting of its services large bands of trained singers and players on instruments were constantly employed. In private life also music seems to have held an important place among the Hebrews. Music and theatre scholars studying the history and anthropology of Semitic and early Judeo-Christian culture, 
have also discovered common links between theatrical and musical activity in the classical cultures of the Hebrews with those of the later cultures of the Greeks and Romans. The common area of performance is found in a social phenomenon called litany, a form of prayer consisting of a series of invocations or supplications. The Journal of Religion and Theater notes that among the earliest forms of litany, Hebrew litany was accompanied by a rich musical tradition. Early music is music of the European classical tradition from after the fall of the Roman Empire, in 476 AD, until the end of the Baroque era in the middle of the 18th century. Music within this enormous span of time was extremely diverse, encompassing multiple cultural traditions within a wide geographic area. Many of the cultural groups out of which medieval Europe developed already had musical traditions, about which little is known. What unified these cultures in the Middle Ages was the Roman Catholic Church, and its music served as the focal point for musical development for the first thousand years of this period. While musical life was undoubtedly rich in the early medieval era, as attested by artistic depictions of instruments, writings about music, and other records, the only repertory of music which has survived from before 800 to the present day is the plain song liturgical music of the Roman Catholic Church, the largest part of which is called Gregorian chant. Pope Gregory I, who gave his name to the musical repertory and may himself have been a composer, is usually claimed to be the originator of the musical portion of the liturgy in its present form, though the sources giving details on his contribution date from more than a hundred years after his death. Many scholars believe that his reputation has been exaggerated by legend. Most of the chant repertory was composed anonymously in the centuries between the time of Gregory and Charlemagne. During the 9th century several important developments took place. First, there was a major effort by the Church to unify the many chant traditions, and suppress many of them in favor of the Gregorian liturgy. Second, the earliest polyphonic music was sung, a form of parallel singing known as organum. Third, and of greatest significance for music history, Notation was reinvented after a lapse of about 500 years, though it would be several more centuries before a system of pitch and rhythm notation evolved having the precision and flexibility that modern musicians take for granted. Ancient Music Biblical Period Several schools of polyphony flourished in the period after 1100, the St. Martial school of organum, the music of which was often characterized by a swiftly moving part over a single sustained line, the Notre Dame school of polyphony, which included the composers Leonin and Peridin, and which produced the first music for more than two parts around 1200, the musical melting pot of Santiago de Compostela in Galicia a pilgrimage destination and site where musicians from many traditions came together in the late Middle Ages, the music of whom survives in the Codex. Calixtinus, and the English school, the music of which survives in the Worcester Fragments and the Old Hall Manuscript. Alongside these schools of sacred music a vibrant tradition of secular song developed, as exemplified in the music of the troubadours, trouvères, and minnesanger. Much of the later secular music of the early Renaissance evolved from the forms, ideas, and the musical aesthetic of the troubadours, courtly poets, and itinerant musicians, whose culture was largely exterminated during the Albigensian Crusade in the early 13th century. Early Music Western art music Medieval music Renaissance music Baroque music Forms of sacred music which developed during the late 13th century included the motet, conductus, discant, and clausely. 
One unusual development was the Geisler leader, the music of wandering bands of flagellants during two periods, the middle of the 13th century, and the period during and immediately following the Black Death, around 1350, when their activities were vividly recorded and well documented with notated music. Their music mixed folk song styles with penitential or apocalyptic texts. The 14th century in European music history is dominated by the style of the Ars Nova, which by convention is grouped with the medieval era in music, even though it had much in common with early Renaissance ideals and aesthetics. Much of the surviving music of the time is secular, and tends to use the forms fixes, the ballade, the virile, the lie, the rondo, which correspond to poetic forms of the same names. Most pieces in these forms are for one to three voices, likely with instrumental accompaniment. Famous composers include Guillaume de Macot and Francesco Landini. The beginning of the Renaissance in music is not as clearly marked as the beginning of the Renaissance in the other arts and unlike in the other arts, it did not begin in Italy, but in Northern Europe, specifically in the area currently comprising Central and Northern France, the Netherlands, and Belgium. The style of the Burgundian composers, as the first generation of the Franco-Flemish school is known, was at first a reaction against the excessive complexity and mannered style of the late 14th century Ars Subtilier and contained clear, singable melody and balanced polyphony in all voices. The most famous composers of the Burgundian school in the mid-15th century are Guillaume Dufay, Jill Bingkoy, and Antoine Bussinois. By the middle of the 15th century, composers and singers from the Low Countries and adjacent areas began to spread across Europe, especially into Italy where they were employed by the papal chapel and the aristocratic patrons of the arts. They carried their style with them, smooth polyphony which could be adapted for sacred or secular use as appropriate. Principal forms of sacred musical composition at the time were the mass, the motet, and the laud. Secular forms included the chanson, the fraudula, and later the madrigal. Classical Music Era the invention of printing had an immense influence on the dissemination of musical styles, and along with the movement of the Franco-Flemish musicians, contributed to the establishment of the first truly international style in European music since the unification of Gregorian chant under Charlemagne. Composers of the middle generation of the Franco-Flemish school included Johannes Akegum, who wrote music in a contrapuntally complex style, with varied texture and an elaborate use of canonical devices, Jacob Obrecht, one of the most famous composers of masses in the last decades of the 15th century, and Gisquine de Prez, probably the most famous composer in Europe before Palestrina, and who during the 16th century was renowned as one of the greatest artists in any form. Music in the generation after Jaskin explored increasing complexity of counterpoint, possibly the most extreme expression is in the music of Nicholas Gombert, whose contrapuntal complexities influenced early instrumental music, such as the canzona and the Reisercar, ultimately culminating in Baroque fugal forms. By the middle of the 16th century, the international style began to break down, and several highly diverse stylistic trends became evident, a trend towards simplicity in sacred music, as directed by the Counter-Reformation Council of Trent, exemplified in the music of Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina, a trend towards complexity and chromaticism in the madrigal, which reached its extreme expression in the avant-garde style of the Ferrara school of Luzaski and the late-century madrigalist Carlo. Gesualdo, and the grandiose, sonorous music of the Venetian school, 
which used the architecture of the Basilica San Marco di Venezia to create antiphonal contrasts. The music of the Venetian school included the development of orchestration, ornamented instrumental parts, and continuo bass parts, all of which occurred within a span of several decades around 1600. Famous composers in Venice included the Gabrielis, Andrea, and Giovanni, as well as Claudio Monteverdi, one of the most significant innovators at the end of the era. Most parts of Europe had active and well-differentiated musical traditions by late in the century. In England, composers such as Thomas Tallis and William Byrd wrote sacred music in a style similar to that written on the continent while an active group of homegrown madrigalists adapted the Italian form for English tastes. Famous composers included Thomas Morley, John Wilby, and Thomas Wilkes. Spain developed instrumental and vocal styles of its own, with Tomás Luis de Victoria writing refined music similar to that of Palestrina, and numerous other composers writing for the new guitar. Germany cultivated polyphonic forms built on the Protestant chorales, which replaced the Roman Catholic Gregorian chant as a basis for sacred music, and imported the style of the Venetian school. In addition, German composers wrote enormous amounts of organ music, establishing the basis for the later Baroque organ style which culminated in the work of J.S. Bach. France developed a unique style of musical diction known as musique misure, used in secular chansons, with composers such as Guillaume Costelli and Claude L. E. Jeanne prominent in the movement. One of the most revolutionary movements in the era took place in Florence in the 1570s and 1580s, with the work of the Florentine Camerata, who ironically had a reactionary intent dissatisfied with what they saw as contemporary musical depravities, their goal was to restore the music of the ancient Greeks. Chief among them were Vincenzo Galilei, the father of the astronomer, and Giulio Cassini. The fruits of their labors was a declamatory melodic singing style known as monody, and a corresponding staged dramatic form, a form known today as opera. The first operas, written around 1600, also define the end of the Renaissance and the beginning of the Baroque eras. Music prior to 1600 was modal rather than tonal. Several theoretical developments late in the 16th century, such as the writings on scales on modes by Joseph Ozarlino and Frank Hinus Gafurius led directly to the development of common practice tonality. The major and minor scales began to predominate over the old church modes, a feature which was at first most obvious at cadential points in compositions, but gradually became pervasive. Music after 1600, beginning with the tonal music of the Baroque era, is often referred to as belonging to the common practice period. The music of the classical period is characterized by homophonic texture, or an obvious melody with accompaniment. These new melodies tended to be almost voice-like and singable, allowing composers to actually replace singers as the focus of the music. Instrumental music therefore quickly replaced opera and other sung forms as the favorite of the musical audience and the epitome of great composition. However, opera did not disappear. During the classical period, several composers began producing operas for the general public in their native languages. Along with the gradual displacement of the voice in favor of stronger, clearer melodies, counterpoint also typically became a decorative flourish, often used near the end of a work or for a single movement. In its stead, Simple patterns, such as arpeggios and, in piano music, Alberti bass, were used to liven the movement of the piece without creating a confusing additional voice. 
The now popular instrumental music was dominated by several well-defined forms, the sonata, the symphony, and the concerto, though none of these were specifically defined or taught at the time as they are now in music theory. All three derive from sonata form, which is both the overlying form of an entire work and the structure of a single movement. Sonata form matured during the classical era to become the primary form of instrumental compositions throughout the 19th century. Romantic Music The early classical period was ushered in by the Mannheim School, which included such composers as Johann Stamitz, Franz Xaver Richter, Karl Stamitz, and Christian Cannabich. It exerted a profound influence on Joseph Haydn and, through him, on all subsequent European music. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was the central figure of the classical period, and his phenomenal and varied output in all genres defines our perception of the period. Ludwig van Beethoven and Franz Schubert were transitional composers, leading into the Romantic period, with their expansion of existing genres, forms, and even functions of music. In the Romantic period, music became more expressive and emotional, expanding to encompass literature, art, and philosophy. Famous early Romantic composers include Schumann, Chopin, Mendelssohn, Bellini, and Berlioz. The late 19th century saw a dramatic expansion in the size of the orchestra, and in the role of concerts as part of urban society. Famous composers from the second half of the century include Johann Strauss II, Brahms, Liszt, Tchaikovsky, Verdi, and Wagner. Between 1890 and 1910, a third wave of composers including Dvok, Mahler, Richard Strauss, Puccini, and Sibelius built on the work of Middle Romantic composers to create even more complex and often much longer musical works. A prominent mark of late 19th century music is its nationalistic fervor, as exemplified by such figures as Dvok, Sibelius, and Grieg. Other prominent late-century figures include Saint Sands, Four, Rachmaninoff, and Frank. 20th and 21st Century Music The 20th century saw a revolution in music listening as the radio gained popularity worldwide and new media and technologies were developed to record, capture, reproduce, and distribute music. Music performances became increasingly visual with the broadcast and recording of music videos and concerts. Music of all kinds also became increasingly portable. Headphones allowed people sitting next to each other to listen to entirely different performances or share the same performance. 20th century music brought a new freedom and wide experimentation with new musical styles and forms that challenged the accepted rules of music of earlier periods. The invention of musical amplification and electronic instruments, especially the synthesizer, in the mid-20th century revolutionized popular music and accelerated the development of new forms of music. Classical music outside Europe Byzantium Asia As for classical music, two fundamental schools determined the course of the century, that of Arnold Schoenberg and that of Igor Stravinsky. Classical music is a broad, imprecise category, including music produced in or rooted in the traditions of art, ecclesiastical, and concert music. A music is classical if it includes some of the following features, a learned tradition, support from the church or government, or greater cultural capital. Classical music is also described as complex, lasting, transcendent, and abstract. In many cultures a classical tradition coexisted with traditional or popular music, occasionally for thousands of years, 
and with different levels of mutual borrowing with the parallel tradition. Sub-Saharan African music is by a strong rhythmic interest that exhibits common characteristics in all regions of this vast territory, so that Arthur Morris Jones has described the many local approaches as constituting one main system. CK also affirms the profound homogeneity of approach. West African rhythmic techniques carried over the Atlantic were fundamental ingredients in various musical styles of the Americas, Samba, Foro, Maracatu and Coco in Brazil, Afro-Cuban music and Afro-American musical genres such as blues, jazz, rhythm and blues, funk, soul, reggae, hip-hop and rock and roll were thereby of immense importance in 20th century popular music. Byzantine music is the music of the Byzantine Empire composed to Greek texts as ceremonial, festival, or church music. Greek and foreign historians agree that the ecclesiastical tones and in general the whole system of Byzantine music is closely related to the ancient Greek system. It remains the oldest genre of extant music, of which the manner of performance and the names of the composers, and sometimes the particulars of each musical work's circumstances, are known. Asian music covers the music cultures of Arabia, Central Asia, East Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. Indian music is one of the oldest musical traditions in the world. The Indus Valley civilization left sculptures which show dance and musical instruments, like the seven-hold flute. Various types of stringed instruments and drums have been recovered from Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro by excavations carried out by Sir Mortimer Wheeler. The Rigveda has elements of present Indian music, with a musical notation to denote the meter and the mode of chanting. Early Indian musical tradition also speaks of three accents and vocal music known as Samagan. The classical music of India includes two major traditions, the southern Carnatic music and the northern Hindustani classical music. India's classical music tradition is millennia long and remains important to the lives of Indians today as a source of religious inspiration, cultural expression, and entertainment. Indian classical music is monophonic and based on a single melody line or raga rhythmically organized through talas. Carnatic music is largely devotional, the majority of the songs are addressed to the Hindu deities. There are a lot of songs emphasizing love and other social issues. In contrast to Carnatic music, Hindustani music was not only influenced by ancient Hindu musical traditions, Vedic philosophy and native Indian sounds but also by the Persian performance practices of the Afghan Mughals. The origins of Indian classical music can be found from the oldest of scriptures, part of the Hindu tradition, the Vedas. Samaveda, one of the four Vedas describes music at length. Chinese classical music is the traditional art or court music of China. It has a long history stretching for more than 3,000 years. It has its own unique systems of musical notation, as well as musical tuning and pitch, musical instruments and styles or musical genres. Chinese music is pentatonic diatonic having a scale of 12 notes to an octave as does European-influenced music. Persian music is the music of Persia and Persian language countries, musiki, the science and art of music, and music, the sound and performance of music. C. Music of Iran, music of Afghanistan, music of Tajikistan, music of Uzbekistan. To the right are some music samples. India China Middle East Persia Samples Sources